please give a warm welcome to Dr. Rohit Chandrasekhar. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rohit Chandrasekhar, and I have a, the privilege of being a program manager in the Defense Sciences Office at DARPA. Now, today, I'm excited to talk to you about some of the work that we've been doing in DSO in the field of optical lenses. Now, everyone in the room today works with optical lenses on a daily basis. It's the basic component that builds up the camera in each and every one of your smartphones that's sitting in your pocket. Now, the lenses in that camera and the lenses in a lot of the cameras that we use in the DoD uh, look pretty similar to what you see on the left-hand side. They're glass lenses that are bulky, especially as we grow them in size. Uh, and they look pretty similar to the lenses that Galileo used in his telescope built 400 years ago. Now, anytime you look at a camera or an imaging system, you never see just a single lens, but usually a series of lenses that's used to image and get a great broadband image. Now, the reason for that is, as you look at the top right, a single lens works pretty well at a single wavelength. If I send green light through, it focuses light exactly where we want it to. But if I send blue or red light through, uh, the performance of the lens deviates a little bit. And this is due to an effect called dispersion, which is natural in all materials. And so what the usual way to fix that is, is to add additional lenses, maybe another lens of a different material or a different shape, that allows us to really stack up those wavelengths at the focus spot and get that great broadband crisp selfie that we want. Now, this is the exact reason why, if you look at your smartphone cameras today, the camera still sticks out of your phone quite a bit. And the reason for that is our electronics have benefited from a significant amount of advancement over the past few decades, but our optics, not so much. Now, about a decade ago, there was a, few, a group of academic researchers that started asking the question, do we actually need a lens to focus light? If we look at the way a lens works on the left-hand side, it's usually a glass lens that refracts light and sends photons to the focus. But instead of doing that, could we instead create a nanostructured film, a film with dedicated structures put in specific spots that can effectively diffract light and send those photons to that same focus? And the idea being that you could actually create structures that are much smaller than the wavelength that could actually allow you to focus light and achieve a diffraction limited spot. Now at the time, the team went ahead and started demonstrating this. And in the middle image, you actually see a fabricated meta optic or a meta surface optic. And you see that it requires even lithography to get to these sizes. And they actually demonstrated a full scale device. Now, as you can see, that full scale device on the right hand side, limited to around 100 microns or so. Um, and very limited in efficiency and bandwidth. But the idea was powerful enough that we could take the glass out of an optical system that DARPA DSO decided to invest a bit further. And that's when we put the DARPA Extreme Optics and Imaging Program together. The idea was basically to have three thrusts. First, can we use this idea to make really great optical components? How do we improve their efficiency? How do we increase their scale up to the centimeter scale to bring them in relevance to the kind of optical systems we work with? Now, I already told you that these devices require sub-wavelength structures on the order of nanometers. And if I want a lens that's on the order of centimeters, that's about seven orders of spatial scale that we need to cover. And so that's a challenge from the multi-scale modeling and, and design uh, aspect. And so we required uh, teams to start thinking about how we can bridge from the nanoscale up to the centimeter scale in design tools. And if we could do that, then we could successfully use those tools to start thinking about how this idea of meta-optics could really impact the field of optical architectures and optical system design. And I'm happy to say, and I'll mention this again later on in the talk, that with this idea, we've been able to successfully demonstrate that you can get about an order of magnitude reduction in size, weight, and power of optical systems, or SWAP, and in, in, in some cases, enhanced functionality as well. But for today's demo, I want to focus on that first aspect, the optical components. I already mentioned just briefly that teams about a decade ago showed around 100 micron or so in aperture size with our goal of getting to a centimeter scale. Well, I'm happy to report that one of our teams has actually gotten all the way up to 10 centimeters. And I actually have the lens with me here today. This is the first 10 centimeter meta lens optic created for visible imaging. And you actually see the lens on the top left. Uh, it's a 10 centimeter lens with about an f of 1.5 or a focus of 150 millimeters um, that works uh, for red light, 632 nanometers. Now, if you actually look at an equivalent refractive lens that you can get that operates at this wavelength as well, uh, you can see at the bottom left, uh, it's about 40 times thicker and about 17 times heavier. This structure 
is, is not very easy to fabricate. It has about 17 billion nanostructures that are fabricated together. And so the way that the team went ahead doing this is, as you see in the middle, is to actually chop it up into seven unique distinct areas that they can then fabricate and repeat across the aperture. And that cool image you see in the middle is actually at the boundary of four of those reticles where you're seeing that the addressability and fabrication at that scale um, is, has about 20 nanometer uh, registration, which uh, really allows for significant fabrication. And achieving that on the order of 10 centimeter scale is, is a significant challenge. And so they went ahead and fabricated this, uh, shared a couple of samples with us as well, and actually were able to evaluate this and demonstrate that they can get efficient focusing at red light or 632 nanometers. Uh, but they went one step beyond that as well, and they actually integrated it into the first meta-optic telescope. This is a telescope that includes only one optic, and that's this one right here. It also has a helical focuser, uh, a, a narrow bandwidth filter that's lined up with the, the bandwidth of, of this lens, as well as a cooled monochromatic sensor. And uh, since the team is in Cambridge, they started taking images of the North American nebula, as you can see on the right-hand side. And this is effectively a uh, 200-second capture averaged together. And so this is truly the first demonstration of a telescope that includes just a single metasurface, a filter, and a cool detector. Now, this idea has had significant implications, and I'm, I'm happy to report that a lot of this has transitioned out of DARPA now. Uh, the idea of using a meta-optic, um, especially not just as an optical element, but also as an aberration corrector for correcting a lot of those distortions that I mentioned earlier in the talk, um, a metasurface can do a lot of great things to actually reduce the amount of elements you require. And so with the help of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and with the Air Force Research Labs, we've now transitioned these novel optic prototypes uh, to fieldable prototypes that can be used on unmanned aerial systems. And it's really with that use case that we've been able to show that you can get about an order of magnitude reduction in size and weight of your optical system, or for the same size and weight, you can actually get about 4x or four times enhancement in resolution. And that's quite powerful, especially when you're thinking about imaging the field. Simultaneously, we also have transitioned to the commercial sector. Some of our teams have created spin-off companies that are now generating meta-optics that are going to be integrated into commercial cameras as early as next year. And so the idea that we can start reducing that thickness of the camera and maybe making it a little smaller than the actual camera, the smartphone itself, is likely feasible with the idea of this meta-surface optic. And so if there's one thing I want to leave you with, with a short talk, is that the idea of transition is critical for us here at DARPA. We want to take a technology and be able to enable a new capability with it. And we really invest in new capabilities. And so as you are engaging at a conference like this with DARPA leadership, DARPA PMs, DARPA CETAs, and other performers, um, help us understand the impact that your technologies are going to have. What are the use cases? What are the impacts it could have if we are wildly successful? And it's really by doing that and engaging on these topics that we can truly think about ways that we can advance the horizons of national security. And so with that, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have at the end of the session today. Thank you so much.